kuekakina. Um, Hanagwe we know maskwa kweo kani pawe de tishne kasin. Mine gando dem. Nish mani do wag bibi kweo gechita. Kichi sipi and donji. Akini da bendonjba. So my name is Gabe. My pronouns are they, them. I am originally from Kichisippi unceded Algonquin territory, colonially known as Ottawa. I am Anishinaabe and Ilnu, <clears throat> as well as mixed white, Scottish, and French Canadian. And I currently live in Amiskwichiswiskaigan, colonially known as Edmonton, which is part of Treaty 6 territory, as well as Métis Region 4. Um, so today I was asked to talk a little bit about Two Spirit. And to start us off in a good way, I wanted to share with you all this song. Um, this is a song that uh, came through James Saddleback um, decades and decades and decades ago um, through ceremony, through Sundance, through fasting, through praying, and was passed down to Leonard Saddleback, um, his grand nephew, um, and who shared it with me. And so this is a song for two spirit people. It is only a song that Two-Spirit people can sing because it is a promise and a pledge. And so because of that, <clears throat> uh, people who are not Two-Spirit, they can't sing this song. Um, and if you're a Two-Spirit person and you are interested in learning more about this song or you want to learn the song, um, do feel free to contact me um, either through uh, the Edmonton Public Library. Uh, they have my contact information um, or you can also reach me through the Altview Foundation if you're seeing this video uh, on YouTube. <clears throat> So that song is it's a really powerful song it's a really beautiful song um, that talks about as a two-spirit person um, or that two-spirit um, um, ancestor that like watches over two-spirit people um, that we and, and them um, will look after you and protect you and that's why only two-spirit people can sing it because it's that's literally what says in the song like I as a two-spirit person as well as the two-spirit um, ancestor that guides all the two-spirit nation um, will watch over you and protect you so that's the pledge, that's the promise. Um, uh, I can only speak for my culture as, as, an, as an Anishinaabe person, as an Ilnu person. Um, we, growing up, we understood that there was things that only men could do and things that only women can do. And so in my life, I asked the elders, I asked my parents, I asked a lot of people, um, what about the Two-Spirit? What, what do Two-Spirit people do? What's Where's our role? What's our place? And um, no one I talked to could answer me. Um, it was very understood that Two-Spirit people and the way that 
we are, our roles were so vital to the community that due to colonization, due to the Indian Act, due to the reservation system, a lot of it was lost. Um, and a lot of the elders alive today that I spoke to had no idea like what the two spirit place was in the community. Um, to the point that, um, a lot of them even told me like, I shouldn't come to sweat lodges and, um, powwows would post on their Facebook pages saying like two spirit people, if they come, um, they can, they have to wear clothing, uh, according to like the gender they were assigned. Um, anyone who was visibly transgender, anyone who was visibly two spirit wearing, um, the regalia or the clothing of, of the quote unquote opposite gender was seen as being disrespectful to the grandmothers and grandfathers and we would get kicked out. And so I'm 28 years old, you know, like I'm very young and <clears throat> my life has been full of like homophobia and transphobia and, um, just a lot of um indigenous people and non-indigenous people just like really fearing us and our gifts and our abilities and being unwelcomed in a lot of spaces and um and so i had um i had a really incredible person an elder um who prophesied that i was gonna have to travel um and he looked at me he was like your community is not ready for these gifts and that's not on you, that's on them. They're the ones who have to grow and evolve to be able to accept your gifts. So don't take it personally that they're doing this to you because it's it's on them. Um, and, and he was like, you're gonna have to travel to get those two spirit teachings and meet these elders and these people. Um, and so he told me that it was probably about six to eight years ago. I was like my very early 20s. And since then I have, I have traveled all across Turtle Island. I've gone to the Arctic, I've been to Mexico, I've gone to San Francisco, Vermont, um, you know, uh, yeah, just like Edmonton, just every end of Turtle Island I could go to, I would. And I have met two spirit people from countless different, um, you know, First Nations, indigenous communities, um, I have learned songs, I have learned creation stories, I have been past ceremony, um, and I don't think my journey's over. I don't, I don't think, um, me learning is ever going to be over in this lifetime. Um, there are incredible two-spirit people all across Turtle Island who are doing amazing work. Um, in my nations, from what, from the knowledge keepers that I've spoken with, as two-spirit people, we have a very sacred duty to be the bridges, to be the in-betweens, um, and to communicate between the genders, to be those peacekeepers, even in 2020, like there is still work for us to do. And um, <clears throat> in Anishinaabe tradition, women are the carriers of the water. Um, when uh, women who have, you know, functioning uteruses, um, get pregnant, the fetus is like surrounded by water, right? And uh, women with functioning uteruses or people with functioning uteruses also have a moon time. Um, and I apologize if that is disrespectful, like saying it like that. Um, I'm open to uh, having someone inform me if there's a better way of saying it. Um, but yeah, it's just pointing out that there are people who do and do not have uteruses that bleed or, or carry children or whatnot. But anyways, um, so... Uh, with that with that cleansing with that period or that moon time there's that flow of that water right and so because of that in our communities women would just take care of the water um, that's why when you see a lot of protests on television you see a lot of water protectors um, being led by the grandmothers being led by mothers and by young girls um, because that's that sacred role and then men were always the caretakers of the fire it was always their role um, you know, to make sure that for ceremonies, um, there was always a fire, um, to make sure that the, their families were provided for, that they, they didn't get cold, that they were fed, that, um, and, and that fire is part of those teachings. And as a two spirit person, what I have, you know, what has been passed on to me is that if I go to a ceremony and there's no one taking care of the water, then it's my role to put a skirt on and to be with the women and to help them with that. And then if there's no one who can take care of the fire, it's my role to go and be with the men and help them with that fire. And then if both of these are taken care of, if there's, if the fire's good, if the water's good, then as a two spirit person, my role is to carry the wind. 
And we do that, um, if two spirit people are healers or, or do traditional doctoring, they do it with their breath. They go, you know, and they, they use their sacred breath um, to shift emotions, to move blockages. Um, we also use our sacred breath when we speak. That's why you will see so many of us, you know, in positions of leadership or, you know, speaking at rallies or just telling stories to kids or things like that. Like just uh, our sacred breath, our voice, our singing or speaking is like part of that wind. Um, and, uh, and then as all human beings, regardless of our gender, regardless of race, it is our role to take care of the earth and to respect her and to make sure that we take care of her so well that we, when we leave this life, mother earth has been left in a better place than when we were born into this earth. And right now we're not doing that. We're actually doing like the complete opposite. Right. Um, and so as two spirit people, like using that sacred breath, using our voices, it's our role to like wake the people up and be like, Hey, we have a duty. We have a responsibility, you know, as human beings, as two leggeds, like every single thing that we need comes from the earth everything and we look at it as like we're gods like we have this superior complex of like we can just take and take and take and take but it's the other way around like we need to humble ourselves and we need to understand that we are nothing without the life that mother earth gives us we are absolutely nothing and so we need to be grateful and we need to make sure that we are giving back in every chance that we get so um there's a lot <laughs> to being a two-spirit person there's a lot um, there are many indigenous nations that believed, uh, that there were more than two genders, more than just male and female. Some nations recognized three genders. Some nations recognized like 15 genders. Um, some nations didn't recognize gender at all. And like every human being in the community was just a human. Um, and a lot of that has been lost because of colonization, so much of it. And we're just now getting it all back. Um, we're just now like elders are just now re, re remembering and resurfacing the traditional words we had in our languages, um, for transgendered, for, um, you know, intersex people, for androgynous people, for asexual people, because we always had those people. Like these are not, um, people saying like, oh, being gay is new or like, no, we've had people who were queer, who were trans, who were, um, platitudes of multitudes of identities since time immemorial here on Turtle Island. Um, but when European colonization happened, they only recognized two genders. And if you didn't fit in either of those boxes, you had to be made to fit into them or you were killed. There was literally a genocide specifically against two spirit people. And we're just now reclaiming that back. So um, if you are learning about two spirit for the first time, I want you to know a couple of really important things. Um, two spirit is an indigenous to Turtle Island only identity. Um, because Two-Spirit is a spiritual identity as well as a role within our traditional communities, if you're not Indigenous, you don't have either of those things. It's not simply being gay and Native or transgender and Native. It goes far beyond that. Like, it is a sacred, spiritual role in our communities. Um, so if you're not Indigenous to Turtle Island, you cannot claim Two-Spirit because it's, as part of being an Indigenous person, like, you know, especially myself being white passing, I claim... Anishinaabe and, and Ilnu, but on the other side of that, my communities have claimed me back, right? And so it's not just me doing lip service, it's come back. And same thing with the Two-Spirit community. I've claimed Two-Spirit, and then the community has claimed me back because I have, through my life and through the work that I do, have shown that I'm at the service of this community and that I'm here to do good and do things in a good way. Um, second thing is that um, it's really important that if you meet an indigenous person from Turtle Island or you are an indigenous person from Turtle Island who is curious about Two-Spirit that you connect them with us. There are Two-Spirit societies in pretty much almost every major city in Canada. We have websites, we have YouTube channels, um, you know, we have Instagrams, we have Facebook pages. We are easy to find. We are very easy to find um, and it's important that people get that information from us. I know a lot of Indigenous people who were told they could not identify as Two-Spirit from white queer folks. And these are not the people, you're not part of our community, so you can't say who can and cannot be a part of our community if you're not in it to begin with. 
Um, so that's very important. And then also if, if you have a friend or someone who's like, what is two spirit, please share this video with them or Google it and watch other YouTube videos by two spirit people. Um, again, because you're not a part of this community, it's really important that you don't take potential jobs away from us or don't take our sacred roles away from us, um, by educating people on something that you don't really know that much about because you're only going to watch a 15 minute, 15 minute video about it. Um, so that's really important. And then also, um, you know, if you are interested in helping us out, like I said, find these societies, um, donate your time, donate your money, donate your experience. Um, you know, if, if you know how to make a website or you know how to, I don't know, build something really cool. Um, I'm sure that folks could use this expertise. Um, we are doing our best to heal ourselves from generations of trauma. Um, from colonial influences uh, and then we also have a very sacred role and responsibility to the people today and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of responsibility and we would love your help and we would love um, you know to have you be a part of that so that's what I have to share today um, chimiguech hi hi for being here and for listening and I hope you have a wonderful day